You're locked into the Grizzly Digital Network. It's time for Grizzlies Live. Now, let's go live to the voice of the Grizzlies, Matt Mahoney. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Grizzlies Live here at Nuke City. As always, I'm your host, Matt Mahoney. We're leading things off with head men's soccer coach Steve DeCoo. Coach, how are we doing? It's good to be back. This is the spring, right? End of April? Yes, it is. Is there something going on in the soccer world I don't know about? No, we're done. Okay. There might be I'm, some things this summer, but that's nothing to do with GGC. <laughs> how'd, to see, how'd the off-season go for the Grizzlies in the spring? Went really well. Uh, thought we got back to um, that culture and, and, and getting ourselves ready for next fall. And so, if I can, if I may, the last time we heard from you guys... Let's not talk about that. Okay, all right, fair enough. No, how, right. How, how have we used that, though? Because you don't just forget about it and move on. You can use it as motivation. How have you guys done that? Um, we honestly haven't talked much about it, but it's, it's in the back of your mind. I mean, there's a missing trophy. There's 13, there's 14, and there's no 15. So the talk with the group was we had to get, we had to get tougher. And by tougher, I mean mentally tougher. And so um, this past spring, uh, when you guys were all still in bed at 6 a.m. Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, we were in the weight room with James doing wow. conditioning. Uh, Monday to Thursday, 1 o'clock, we were on the field training. And so we went through the grapevine. There were some programs. Uh, nationally that don't do much or very little in the spring and we put in the hard work necessary we've changed the culture back to who we are and part of the problem Matt was we were a younger group we've matured this spring we you know did very well in our matches but I saw that grit and determination that I saw in the championship years I saw that in this group this spring and so even if we didn't bring in one person with recruiting segue um, <laughs> even if we didn't bring in one person this group is better than we were in the fall and we're ready to compete and I'm, I'm looking forward to next fall. I don't have the answers you do but it sounds like we can switch chairs here and you can conduct well, this. I, I could do it all myself. <laughs> no, no, but uh, What it, is that incoming recruiting class looking like? Without giving names away, sure. um, we've we filled our need. We have more depth. One of the things we talked about was a staff, another segue, um, <laughs> we weren't athletic enough as we were in years past. Correct. We didn't have good good soccer players, but we lacked a bit. Of, when you lose an Ibrahima and you lose a David Burke and a Renee Anang, we didn't replace them with like-for-like -like athletes. Maybe better soccer players, but we went back to a bit of that. We got our athletes in. We got ourselves more depth in the back. We got ourselves more depth in the midfield and even up front. Um, and so, let's. It, 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 we've had guys in years past that don't show up, so that's why we're not going to talk about names and whatnot. Because I'll tell you, in August when I see the whites of their eyes. But what we've done on paper thus far, we've addressed our needs, we have depth, we've got a group that's going to be able to make a deep run into nationals. I can hear in your voice and using the descriptor like whites in our eyes. You're, I mean, I don't want to shoo your summer away, but you're ready. I mean, you want to get right back after it here. You're ready for August to get here. No, I'm ready for May, the end of May, to put my feet up. But no, I'm, I'm ready for this season because this spring rejuvenated our batteries. I feel very positive about the group that's coming back. Then you supplement that with great soccer players, great people. Yeah, I mean, if you're not excited about this, why are you doing it? And sure. so it's, it's that passion that I'm, I can't wait. Well, speaking of that passion, especially from a coaching standpoint, we'd be remiss here without mentoring the departure of Kevin May, the guy that helped start the program with you, our one and only assistant coach. He has moved on to uh, other things here, not in a negative way, very much a positive way. But uh, what has he meant to this program? No, I mean, Kev was uh, probably, Kev's moved on, took the first assistant job at the University of Albany, Division One. So great opportunity Pretty for cool, him. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's you only want the best for your guys. And so, you know, Kev was assistant coach in title, but associate head coach. I mean, he was right there with everything. You know, great talent evaluator, great coach. Um, part of the reason our success, I mean, great coaches, I look good, not because I'm the greatest coach, it's because I have great players and great assistants. And it's because of Kevin's hard work, his determination, his dedication to the program that we're able to have success. Um, we've kind of give you an update is where we are with his position I can't give names yet because he hasn't officially cleared sure. the HR background process but a position has been offered it's been accepted he actually took it this morning nice. officially accepted it with HR this morning breaking news anytime we can break news breaking here news. Grizzlies Live it's my favorite um, and I'm really excited about this hire because he's going to add some some unique abilities to the group from his background maybe overseas maybe 
Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe he's been at a very successful NCAA program. So uh, excited about the hire that we're going to bring in, and so looking forward to his ability to help us. And just give the fans maybe some insight here. As we're an NAI school, we're an independent, we're now working on year four or year five of the program here as you move forward. Is that two of the harder challenges for head coaches at GGC? One, I think, is scheduling moving forward. As we continue to be more successful, it's going to be harder to fill that schedule. And two, with that success with the program, assistant coaches are going to have some opportunities to move on. Yeah, from a scheduling perspective, you're just on the horn always. I mean, literally on my way driving in here, I had a coach from uh, uh, Kansas who's saying, how can I come down to play you guys? Sign them up. Exactly. Uh, the problem is that they're always top 10, top 15s, and you can't have a, an entire schedule of that. Otherwise, you're just, you know, you better have a lot of depth. But uh, scheduling component, that's pretty easy because good teams want to play us. Our facilities, people want to come here. Um, and then with travel, just trying to keep it close enough. From a, you asked about coaches, you want that. You want your coaching tree to expand. You want guys to come in. You know, hopefully this new head assistant is only with me for two or three years and then he's off taking over his own program. Because quality people means that, that, that my players, our program, are developing and growing. Speaking of developing and growing for your players, they're working on finals right now, projects. I'm sure they're booking flights to go home for the international guys. What are their responsibilities? Because you're not going to see them for two or three months before they report back for fall camp. What, what's their responsibilities? Well, right now, it's finish that semester semester well. I mean, if, if midterms were any indication, we're on course to have on course to have our best semester ever. There were there was one F out of all the boys, and wow. he and he said that was because. Uh, his work hadn't been counted. Okay. So, you know, we were doing very well in the classroom. So finish the semester strong. When we, um, t breaking news, but I can't <laughs> bring it, I can't say anything about it. Um, go home and rest. We, we kicked their tails this spring. They, you're up at 6 a.m. You're practicing at one o'clock. You're taking care of academics. They're tired. So go home and sleep a bit. But then, you know, work on your fitness. The training program will be sent out uh, by the time finals end come back to camp ready to go. We had our end of the year meetings. They have their fitness testing goals to come back ready to do that. Uh, but the big thing is go home, take care of your body, get your feet up, relax, eat mama's home cooking, <laughs> put the put the miles in the work in, and come back ready to win championships next year. Well, Coach, I got a feeling even the, the spring semester is going to come to an end, summer, some downtime, that phone's not going to stop ringing. It seems like you guys are always on the clock, we are regardless always, of the season. Yeah, no, then that's the fun <laughs> part because, uh, you know, that's actually the new assistant asking me questions. Underneath it was a, uh, a signing we just picked up yesterday with questions. So uh, you love this thing, but there's also days you just want to <laughs> toss it in the trash and not have to worry about things. Fair enough. Well, Coach, thanks so much for dropping by here. Thanks We're really looking me. forward to August. I know, I know a lot of spring on the brain here with the Grizzlies and a lot of success, but uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what that men's soccer team Get up and support the uh, spring tournaments coming up. Shameless plug from Coach Deku. I like that. Team player. I'm telling you, if you get too close to this chair, any play-by-play -play chops are going to be welcome addition to the Grizzly Digital Network here. Well, with what you've got coming up with baseball and softball, I, I'll be your Steve Stone. Okay. All right. <laughs> I like that. Ed men's soccer coach Steve Dekuya. We're going to take a break. We'll come back and have GDC baseball senior Ryan Turner right here on Grizzlies Live, a new tier on the Grizzly Digital Network. Hi, I'm Dr. Ian Potter, Assistant AD for Internal Operations at Georgia Gwinnett College. This year, we are proud to implement Be Great, our new student athlete development program designed to help student athletes develop the skills necessary to be successful leaders inside and outside of the classroom. In addition, we are launching the Grizzly Leadership Academy, which provides comprehensive leadership training to a select group of high potential student athletes. For more information about our student athlete development programs, visit grizzlyathletics.com. Enjoy the game and go Grizzlies. It's time to gear up, Grizzly fans. Right now, you can find all the latest Grizzly gear to support your team by visiting the Georgia Gwinnett College official bookstore inside the Student Center. Or simply shop online anytime, anywhere by visiting ggc.bncollege.com. From hats and t-shirts to jackets and one-of-a-kind collectibles, you can find it all with the official GGC bookstore. Plus, on game day, be sure to swing by the merchandise table at the stadium. So pick up your favorite item today and show your Grizzly spirit. Go Grizzlies! Hello, I'm Dr. Darren Wilson, Director of Athletics at Georgia Gwinnett College. Here at Grizzly Athletics, we pride ourselves in our five core values. Service, leadership, sportsmanship, responsibility, and the pursuit of excellence. Our mission is to develop lifelong leaders of character through academic and athletic excellence. 
We hope you're enjoying today's broadcast, and we thank you for your support of our program. Go Grizzlies! Hi Grizzly fans, this is Ned Colgrove, Assistant Athletics Director for External Operations. Are you interested in helping offer a championship experience for every single one of our student athletes? Come join us in the Grizzly Club. You can call me directly at 678-407-5241 to learn more or see our Grizzly Club information online at grizzlyathletics.com. There you can check out our member benefits like game tickets and insider events, plus make your online donation. We can't wait to have your support of our student athletes and welcome you to the Grizzly Club. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, here to Grizzlies Live at Nuke City. We're joined now by senior pitcher, Mr. Ryan Turner. Turner, how are we doing, buddy? Doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good here as uh, the season is starting to wind down a little bit here. We got a three game showdown with Talladega coming up. Mm -hmm. I, mean, it's, I don't want to say it's, it's over, but has it sank in just a little bit? Senior day was this past weekend? It's starting to okay, a little bit right. um but i don't think it's going to set in until after the season's really over whenever that is exactly so you know right now we've just got our main goal we still got to go out there and win this weekend we got to go out there and win the conference win the regional and then hopefully the world series yeah we'll see well i definitely don't want to overlook this weekend series with talladega but a lot of storylines going into the postseason i wanted to right. talk to you about here you've been with the program for a long time i've got 48 and 4 on the season Number one ranking in the country, hosting that NAI tournament, or the AI tournament, right. as well as that NAI opening round. Is this season right. kind of going according to plan right now? I'd say so. <laughs> I mean, if you would have told me at the beginning of the year, not to sound conceited, but that's our goal. Our goal was to not lose a game. And for 25 games, we achieved that goal. But, I mean, ultimately, we, all, we always play for a World Series win. But our main goal is to get a one seed in the – in the, uh, the opening round. Right. You get a bye, you get rest, you, pitchers, you get rest, you know, hitters get rest. So everybody, it's, it's, it's great. Um, and then ultimately, you know, our goal is to get to World Series and make a run in the World Series. But yeah, I'd say the season's definitely with four losses. It's definitely going according to plan. Pretty, pretty impressive for sure. For your senior class, there's mm -hmm. 18 of you guys. We nah, celebrated nah. that moment this past weekend. Mm -hmm. What were the emotions like for you? A little bittersweet. Um, you know, we still had a big series. That was, the, I think, everybody's main focus was we still had a big series against USCB that we needed to take care of. Yeah. Um, but it was good having all the families out there. I know mine don't really get to come up, you know, very often. But it was good having them out there and good having a big fan base out there, you know, yeah, for the it games. Um, it was a little bittersweet. Like I said, it hasn't sunk in just yet. But I think that was the the start of it, you know. Do we have any injuries to report from the ceremonial first pitch? 18 simultaneous first pitches. It was elbow to elbow in there. Yeah. Everybody survived. I, everybody okay? Player-wise, we're all good. Okay. Um, but I think some of the dads actually had to go see James. <laughs> um, but other than that, I think we're all good. Okay, all right. Grizzlies are good to go here. Um, for you and this team, we take it, take me back to last year. Mm -hmm. There's so many great accomplishments. 50 wins. Right. But at the end of the year, it was a little empty. How did you, you and this team, use what happened last year to motivate you guys to what is now today? I think last year, this year's team reminds me a lot of two years ago, a World Series team. A lot of senior leadership, um, a lot of drive. Uh, last year's team, we had the same thing. A lot thing. of hitting, a lot of pitching, a lot of stolen bases. Go ahead. Exactly. <laughs> ex exactly. Um, and I think last year we had the same thing, but I think we were a little short when it came to the bullpen. Um, and I think last year's team, we wanted it, but we never actually went out there to get it. Um, this year's team and last year's team, the two best examples I have, you know, were down five runs against USCB the other day. There wasn't a single person in the dugout that thought we were going to lose. Wow. We don't have that thought. Same thing with Southeastern. Probably the biggest game in this program's history was that Southeastern game to go to the World Series. Right. You know, we're down going into the rain delay. We come back and we just are on fire. Oh, the racks triple exactly. I think it was back to back triples or yeah. back to back doubles or something First like that. Closer. Right. And you know that year and this year, nobody wants to lose. Yeah. And last year's team, I think we had the same thought, but it just we just didn't have that extra little pep in our step to go get it. Well, Turner, I think you and I could sit here and tell stories all day long. Oh, yeah. All the way up to first pitch in Talladega on, oh, yeah. Oh, on yeah. Friday. But I wanted to get you, let you have some fun, relax a little bit. Right, I know it. you're always serious and dialed in and yeah. never have any fun whatsoever. <laughs> no shot, no fun. But uh, I want to give you the speed round treatment. You okay Let's do with it. that? Yep. All right, you ready? I'll give you a question. First thing pops in your mind. Okay? Gotcha. All right. Game winning run, second base, two outs. We've had this question before. Bottom of the ninth, who do you want to play? Reinhardt. Zach Reinhardt. Either him or Merrigan. Sure. They're hitting the ball really well right now. Um, either one, really. Is it just me? I sit up there in the press box and I hear things differently than what goes on mm -hmm. in the dugout. 
when the ball hits the bat of those two lefties, it makes a different noise it's than different. everybody else. It's very okay. different. Right. It's very Alex, different. That wasn't crazy. They, they get the bat head out. I don't know much about hitting, but it just it does sound different, and it's they're they're great. They're great hitters. Grizzlies leading by one run going into the ninth. Who you want on the mound? It's a hard one. Solomon, right now, he's our closer. Um, but to be honest with you, and I, I have faith in every single guy that comes out of the bullpen. I mean, regardless of if it's me, whoever Strom puts in there, I, I, I trust Strom. I trust those guys in the bullpen. Anybody. But right now, with Solomon being the closer, I'd go Solomon. You can give me some inside information here. Is he throwing harder? He's throwing, he's throwing well. Yeah. He's throwing harder. Because I just, I just, from what I remember him as a starter, yeah. I've seen him a couple times at a bullpen. I'm like, oh. it seems like he's throwing harder. Right. I think he now that he's he's got one inning, you know, maybe two in the eighth. Um, he doesn't have to go out there and pace himself. He can go out there and just let it let it go. Sure. Most feared hitter on the team. Probably Reinhardt again. Re Reinhardt or Jabari. Oh, yeah. Okay. Jabari kind of, you know, a little surprise pick, but Jabari, I had trouble throwing to him in the fall a little bit. Um, I just was always, I, I, not intimidated by him. Sure. Not intimidated by him. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, they just, he crowds the plate, he's on the plate, he's just a presence in the batter's box. Yeah, absolutely. All right, um, who has the best Brad Stromdahl impersonation? Uh, probably Pascal or myself. Ooh. I mean, do you want to volunteer well, here? Well, he, he, Strom's such a hard guy to predict. Sure, correct. Um, but the main thing that comes to mind is whenever he we have a after we win or something like that, we huddle in the outfield, and the first thing he always says is, "Close, come closer," <laughs> and then he'll look around for a little bit, and he'll say, "Good game, pitchers you threw the ball well, so and so you did well, clean up the field, tarp pull tomorrow, I'll let you know, put it on group me." So when That's he it. says, so when he says, I don't really talk to the guys, he really means that. I'll ask him that all the time. Hey, what'd you tell no. the guys after the game? Oh no, it's amazing. No. You know, regardless of win or loss, he just goes out there, tells what we did wrong, and it's in the past. Can't do anything about it anyway. Fair enough. So. Fair enough. Best, I know you got a, a strong opinion about this topic, okay? Best walkout song on the Ooh. team. That is a tough one. I like I like Brady Hamilton's. Nice. Hail Mary by yeah, Tupac. That's yeah. a good one. You got to be, you got to be some, yeah, it's bold. bold. Exactly. That's a good word. Bold for it to come out for that. But uh, I think it fits him well. Big Who's, guy like that. Who's got the worst? I don't know. That's all right. Probably Marcus McCorkle. Yeah. Because the first time I heard that, I thought it said some derogatory language. <laughs> and every time I hear his song, that's all I can think of. Okay, fair enough. So, so the seed's been planted. Yeah. So Marcus is young. Just, he's well, got to learn. He's it's got to learn. That's fair enough. I made mistakes with my walking song <laughs> my freshman year, too. You know? you know? We've all been there. Uh, best fungo hitter on the staff. And I know oh. you have an expertise in this category from taking ground balls at shortstop every day. Other than Strom. Okay. Other than Strom, uh, probably Dalton. No offense, Norty, um, but Dalton hits him well. Okay, all right. Dalton Martinez, and then last, a uh, favorite memory here at GGC. Oh, easy, just going to the World Series that year. Yeah. Um, dog piling on the mound. It was, I feel like, no, I've never done that. It was very fun. I'll never forget it. Um, Where were you at in the pile? I was in the bottom. Oh, that was a mistake. I was right next to Drew Riley uh -huh. when he hurt his knee, and um, just that was the biggest mistake. Because it all just goes black. It does. And, and it goes breathe. black quick. And they can't breathe. Mm -hmm. you can't and they, see. when you tell them to get off, they don't get off. No, because they're never celebrating. Exactly. So this year, when we dogpile, I will be the last one it's, on top. It's one of those, because everybody wants to be the first over the rail. Exactly. Be the first over the rail, but the last. On I'll, the I'll be the first one over the rail, but I'm going to tie my shoe, and then I'll go out there. Or just like a jog in easy, place. Easy, you know, easy jog. Let them elbow past you. Got right, to. Good stuff. Turner, it's always a fun hanging out yes, with you, sir. man. Uh, before I let you go, you got some shout-outs for me? Uh, yeah, my parents, uh, grandparents yeah. for coming out to the game. Um, it's good to see them out there this weekend. Um, the team, you know, got to keep yeah. doing what we're doing, keep grinding it out. We've got one more weekend series left. Um, I think that's about it this time. Fair enough. That's about it. Fair enough. So. Turner, always a pleasure, my yes, man. Yes, sir. Have a good uh, – you got finals coming up? Oh, yeah. Good luck, yeah. buddy. All next week. Good luck on finals. Yes, we'll sir. see you this Friday. You got it. We'll take a break. We'll come back with uh, junior right fielder on Grizzly softball, Mary Burke, right here on Grizzlies Live in New Cedar. Grizzly Visual Network. The Georgia Gwinnett Grizzlies compete in the heart of Gwinnett County in Metro Atlanta. The Grizzlies currently field six teams and compete at the state-of-the-art Grizzly Athletics Complex. Georgia Gwinnett College is transforming higher education and celebrating 10 years since its charter class in 2005. As you plan your next trip to see the Grizzlies, log on to grizzlyathletics.com and select the Visitor's Guide. From driving directions to local points of interest and a listing of our proud sponsors, log on to grizzlyathletics.com. 
The Georgia Gwinnett Grizzlies Grizzly fans, Kingdom. be sure to join the conversation right now during today's broadcast. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Grizzly Athletics. Also, be sure to use the hashtag Grizzly Athletics to share your comments, photos, and videos. Don't be left out. You can check out inside updates straight from the Grizzlies, plus see what other fans are talking about. We want to hear from you, so join the Grizzly Athletics conversation right now. Hi, Grizzly fans. This is Ned Colgrove, Assistant Athletics Director for External Operations. Are you interested in helping offer a championship experience for every single one of our student athletes? Come join us in the Grizzly Club. You can call me directly at 678-407-5241 to learn more or see our Grizzly Club information online at grizzlyathletics.com. There, you can check out our member benefits like game tickets and insider events, plus make your online donation. We can't wait to have your support of our student athletes and welcome you to the Grizzly Club. Hello, I'm Dr. Darren Wilson, Director of Athletics at Georgia Gwinnett College. Here at Grizzly Athletics, we pride ourselves in our five core values, service, leadership, sportsmanship, responsibility, and the pursuit of excellence. Our mission is to develop lifelong leaders of character through academic and athletic excellence. We hope you're enjoying today's broadcast and we thank you for your support of our program. Go Grizzlies. It's time to gear up Grizzly fans. Right now, you can find all the latest Grizzly gear to support your team by visiting the Georgia Gwinnett College official bookstore inside the Student Center or simply shop online anytime, anywhere by visiting ggc.bncollege.com. From hats and t-shirts to jackets and one-of-a-kind collectibles, you can find it all with the official GGC bookstore. Plus, on game day, be sure to swing by the merchandise table at the stadium. So pick up your favorite item today and show your Grizzly spirit. Go Grizzlies! Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, here to Grizzlies Live in New Cedar. We're hanging out with Grizzly softball outfitter, Mary Burke. Mary, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. I'm kind of hungry right now. Yeah, me too. <laughs> this, uh, this, this show always ruins my appetite, or gets in the way of my appetite, I should say, but we're looking forward to hanging out here at Nukes. Um, first thing, I asked you how are you doing, but how are the Grizzlies doing? We haven't seen you guys in a month. I know. Um, we've been pretty good enjoying our off days. Uh, we have practice today, so, you know, ready to get back on the field. What's the feeling like? Because you guys have had some cancellations this year. Right? You guys can't control the weather, the travel, anything like that. But what's the feeling when you hear cancellations? It's like, yay, day off, or I kind of was looking forward to playing today. It's like a little bit of both because, you know, we really do enjoy playing and we want to keep getting our wins and stuff. So, you know. But. You guys have been playing well the month of April when you do get to play. Nine and three record. What have the Grizzlies done recently that's led to that record? Um. Just having fun and relaxing and just doing what we do. And so for you, you've had a pretty good junior campaign a little bit. I mean, the numbers speak for itself, but if you got to self-evaluate here, what's the difference between Mary Burke's freshman year and Mary Burke's junior year for you? Well, I'm not injured this year. <laughs> That's true. I'm not That's injured. Um, but I don't know, just I keep working on my swing and trying to get better every day and giving it my all. Yeah, true story here. Uh, yesterday, I was literally looking for Mary Burke to let her know she was going to be on the show, and she was in the cages hitting. I interrupted <laughs> your, your your self tea work there. Yeah, did you get yeah. back to work okay? I did. I uh, did. I, didn't, I don't want to distract you too much there. But uh, but your experiences um, throughout your career is going to carry over to this postseason. The Grizzlies are going to host an AI tournament now for the third year in a row, and last year's tournament MVP is sitting right next to me here. <laughs> How did you take that week and those experiences and transfer it to this year? You played pretty well. Um, honestly, just relaxing and treating it as another game, uh, not pressing too much because when we press, we just it's just not a good time. But um, just having fun with it and playing. Because it was unexpected last year for yeah. you. You just the right place at the right time. You came through and mm -hmm. delivered more than on one occasion repeatedly, <laughs> and you're announced the most valuable player. Who this year can you share that experiences with or maybe say, hey, listen, you're going to have an opportunity and have you kind of counseled them a little bit? Um, I mean, just a lot of our freshmen. I think E, she has stepped up a lot um, playing shortstop. Um, I mean, I think everybody's ready and everybody's pretty much relaxed and we're ready for it. Yeah, a great answer. I couldn't agree more. We're really looking forward to it. You guys will host the AI tournament the 5th through the 7th. Then we caught word last week 
Now you guys are 39 and 15 on the season. They're going to host the NAI opening round as well. Where were you at when you heard that news? Um, pretty sure I was at the pool because we had an off day. So <laughs> Fair enough. I was with some of my teammates and we're, we are all so excited about it. So what's the difference? Because last year we qualified for that opening round, but we had to go to uh, Auburn Montgomery. This year we get to host it. What's sort of the expectations after doing it last year, now looking forward to it this year? Um, it helps having uh, the home field advantage. Uh, just we feel a lot more comfortable here. Um, but, yeah, I think everybody's just ready and really excited. New uh, poll coaches poll came out yesterday. We're now number 11. We floated around right around yeah. 10. Are we, are we okay with that? What's the thought process? Um, I mean, I think we should have stayed at 9. But <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, it doesn't really matter at this point. I mean, we just want to focus on playing hard and winning. So you guys are going to get some time off between now and the start of that conference tournament. What's the regiment like? You guys got practice this afternoon? Yep, we got practice pretty much for the rest of the week. Coach and then, Kat's not taking it easy on you. Oh, so. no, no. <laughs> never. Never. Fair enough. Well, Mary Bird, thanks for dropping by. Thank Greatly you. appreciate it here. And before I let you go, probably an overdue shout out for you you played so well this season we haven't got you up there for grizzly today so look right at that camera right there give me some shout outs um just shout out to my family love you guys and the whole team that's it short sweet and to the point Mary Bird, thanks for Thank dropping you. by greatly appreciate it good luck at practice today thank too, you okay? <laughs> we're going to take a break we'll come back for a nice little bow on the show you're watching grizzlies live in new city on the grizzly digital network Hi, I'm Dr. Ian Potter, Assistant AD for Internal Operations at Georgia Gwinnett College. This year, we are proud to implement Be Great, our new student athlete development program designed to help student athletes develop the skills necessary to be successful leaders inside and outside of the classroom. In addition, we are launching the Grizzly Leadership Academy, which provides comprehensive leadership training to a select group of high potential student athletes. For more information about our student athlete development programs, visit grizzlyathletics.com. Enjoy the game and go Grizzlies. It's time to gear up, Grizzly fans. Right now, you can find all the latest Grizzly gear to support your team by visiting the Georgia Gwinnett College official bookstore inside the Student Center. Or simply shop online anytime, anywhere by visiting ggc.bncollege.com. From hats and t-shirts to jackets and one-of-a-kind collectibles, you can find it all with the official GGC bookstore. Plus, on game day, be sure to swing by the merchandise table at the stadium. So pick up your favorite item today and show your Grizzly spirit. Go Grizzlies! Hello, I'm Dr. Darren Wilson, Director of Athletics at Georgia Gwinnett College. Here at Grizzly Athletics, we pride ourselves in our five core values. Service, leadership, sportsmanship, responsibility, and the pursuit of excellence. Our mission is to develop lifelong leaders of character through academic and athletic excellence. We hope you're enjoying today's broadcast, and we thank you for your support of our program. Go Grizzlies! Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, here to Grizzlies Live at Nuke Cedary. As uh, appreciate Coach Deku, Ryan Turner, Mary Burke being on the show here, it is an absolute crazy time of the year for our student athletes trying to wrap up their academics as well as getting prepared for their postseason journeys. And we all know that's what it's going to come down to make or break your season, whether you bring home the hardware. So, uh, as always, stay tuned to our website, grizzlyathletics.com, for the latest information. And if you don't know, we're hosting the AI Championship for baseball and softball. Tennis is going to host the conference tournament as well. And then both baseball and softball have opening round bids May 16th through the 20th. So uh, it's going to be a busy time and a great time with Grizzly Athletics as we turn the calendar over from April to May. So you're not going to want to miss that, any of the action. All right, Grizzly trivia question here. We're going to toss this up on Twitter. First one to reply will uh, pick up the Grizzly prize pack that looks something like this. It's got a couple of tickets in it as well. Uh, scheduled card, t-shirt, whole nine yards. All right, Colin, let's have a look. Who was last year's AII softball tournament most valuable player? Multiple choice there. Cassidy Littlefield, some great options, by the way. Cassidy Littlefield, Mary Burke, Caleb Byram, or Ashley Beike. First one with the correct answer, you can win. Uh, you will win the Grizzly prize pack. What else we got here? Um, tweet of the week comes from our good friend Cody Butler, who always has some great things to say. And if you want to sum up the last series versus USC Buford, there it is right there. Hashtag GDC Baseball 47 and 4, and uses just phenomenal pitching to sweep USC Buford in a statement made 
by the top ranked Grizzlies. Well put there, Cody. And again, fans, you can be our tweet of the week by using the hashtag GDC Baseball or any of the hashtags associated with our sports teams. Also earlier this week, Davis Atkins received the AII Male Athlete of the Week Award. And so congratulations, David Atkins had himself a phenomenal week as he's actually pursuing the single season strikeout record for GGC Baseball, chasing Tyler Carpenter's 98 Ks. So uh, keep an eye on Davis Atkins, especially this weekend versus Talladega. Friday afternoon, two o'clock, Grizzlies will take on Talladega. An interesting note, Talladega is also a part of the AII. So Talladega is gonna come to Lawrenceville this weekend and they're gonna be right back here later on the following weekend for that AII tournament. So uh, not a series that the Grizzlies wanna sweep on the Tornadoes. They'll be playing the doubleheader on Saturday beginning at two o'clock. Colin, we good? Stephanie, we good? We get out of here? All right. Job well done by our entire cast and crew. As always, I'm Matt Mahoney signing off saying so long, everybody. This is the Grizzly Digital Network. We'd like to thank our corporate sponsors for making today's broadcast possible. You can watch archive broadcasts and feature stories in the On Demand tab of the Grizzly Digital Network. For the most recent information, log on to grizzlyathletics.com.